Boy, what a weird show this is. Kim, we'll take anything we can get. What the hell did this guy do here? We, we have the most modern technology. We've got air conditioning up here now with the technology the way we got it. You got a knife? <laughs> there are no knives. I guess they won't let me have a knife, will they? <laughs> you can give me that spoon. That's all right. That spoon you can jab with that, yeah. Can you not jab it with this? Just. No. There you go, there you go. Don't say no. There you, go. you don't give up a little that there. easy. There you go. There's got to be a way. That's a claw. Right? There. <laughs> Air. Boy, right at your fingertips. There you go. Thank you. Boy, do you, can you, we're going into the year 2000. <laughs> we didn't have this when I was a kid. That's part of the deal coming down here, you know. Did you see, uh, anybody see the show, uh, uh, during the week here with Bing Crosby and the one with Bob Hope, and then they had the Rack Pat, uh, uh, the Rack Pack on, or what was it, Rack Pack? Have you, have you seen that? You guys seen that? It's on A and E. It's great, great. A lot of friends of mine are on there. Uh, Joey Bishop. You know. What's the fellow's name that sang with Sinatra and the Rat Pack? You mean Martin. Dean? Dean no, Martin. Dean Martin. Yeah. yeah, we worked with him many That's times. That's my bison. Is that your pies on? Well, Did you know Italian. him? Did no, you know? No, no, I never met him. You didn't team. know him? No. Yeah, we worked together uh, a lot. Well, I, I have to control this thing. It's one thing to, to get the air, and then it's another one to put it in the right place. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but we'll go on with the show in a second. Anyway. It, we, we play a little longer, so it comes out even. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, Oh, if you didn't see the show, it's on A and E, and it's great. You, uh, Lou, you saw Lou. No, I didn't see it. None of it. No, I missed it. Well, the Rat Pack is on now tonight, so you won't see that. I won't see that either. But that's the second half with uh, Sinatra, and I started with uh, with Frank Sinatra in 1937. Uh, I was working at 53rd and Broadway with Fred Waring, and we had a show on. You, there's probably nobody here. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got one that, can, that heard the Les Paul Trio with Fred Waring in 1937 to 1941. And Major Bose uh, had his offices in the same building with Fred Waring where we rehearsed with 65 Pennsylvanians. We were on every night for Chesterfield. And Major Bose got out of his big limo and he had Four guys had piled out of that limo. You know how those little circuses where all those guys pile out? Mm -hmm. Well, when Major Bose got out, he had spats on, and he had a top hat on. Oh, boy, this guy was killing him. Major Bose with the amateur hour. And he had the gong. If you weren't good, the gong hit, and that was it. Well, I didn't mean to be a poet. That's just the way it happened to come out. Uh, and that was it. Uh, when he hit the gong. What happened is that Major Bose gets out and he's got the Hoboken Four with him, and that was Albert France, Francis Albert uh, Sinatra, mm -hmm. and that skinny little kid. Uh, I wondered who they were, so we tuned in to hear the show that night, and it was Sinatra. Uh, and Major Bose asked us to be on his amateur show too, but we didn't take that. We joined Fred Waring. The first week we came to New York, we, we just worked our way to New York. When we got here, we ended up uh, going in, in, in the 53rd and Broadway, where the Letterman show is now. Went in there and, uh, oh boy, did I pull a fast one on my other two guys in the trio. So, you know, you, you, this is something I can tell you now, because both of my fellows in the trio are no longer with us, but you are. So I could be doing a scam on you, just like the one I did with them. We'll be prepared. We were in Chicago, and they said, well, where are we going? And I said, well, I want to flip a coin. So I took a coin, and I flipped it, came down here. So I said, we're going to New York. 
and we drove to New York playing with the WLS barn dance. That's, uh, that's some, nobody's heard that, the WLS barn dance, no one here. But it was big, and it was bigger than the Nashville barn dance. And we joined that outfit, and we worked our way to Malone, New York, and that was the last job we played. And we drove, and this is the latter part of 1936, early, the early part of 37. We're driving down from Malone, New York, and we heard a fellow on the radio singing. And it was Dick Todd. Now, nobody's heard of Dick Todd, but he was a guy that copied Bing Crosby. And we heard him on WHAM in Rochester. So we said, geez, there's all kinds of talent here. And we came down for the first time in our life, down 17, and saw the Catskills. What the hell is that? And we're seeing nightclubs, and we're seeing all these different, Eddie Cantor, Jack Benny, Burns and Allen, uh, Fred, uh, Fred, uh, Fred Allen and Burns and Allen, all these comedians in the nightclubs up in the Catskills. We came to New York, and I lied. I had told my trio, the other, Jimmy Atkins and Ernie Newton, that I had a very dear friend, Paul Whiteman, in New York. So when we got to New York, we were washing our clothes up uh, uh, in a wash tub, in a, in a bathtub. And they says, hey, when we hanging these clothes out, well, let's uh, call your friend. And so they did. They went down and got the yellow pages and looked up Paul Whiteman, and they handed me his phone number. So I went to the phone hanging on the wall down the lobby, and I called him, and he says, what did he, what'd he say? says, I got his secretary. And the secretary says, we're not interested. I said, I had a trio, and I wanted to come over and play for Paul Whiteman. He said, we're not interested, and she hung up. And I said that the two guys in the trio, I said, <coughs> they said, come right over. <laughs> so we went over to 53rd and Broadway, and that's when we got, got to go in there, and we saw the Sinatra thing, okay? And we go upstairs. And when we get there to see Paul Whiteman, I see him down that long hallway, this big fat guy. And boy, he was the biggest thing in show business. And I says, hi, Paul. And the secretary closed the door. And I'm standing in the hallway. And right there, I thought, oh my God, my two guys in the trio. And out steps Fred Waring. Fred Waring was also a tremendously popular man with a 65-piece glee club and orchestra. And he steps out of the men's room. And I says, are you Fred Waring? He says, yeah, but I'm not interested in any, any more people. And I says, well, the elevator, uh, till the elevator gets here? He says, well, I can't stop you. So we break into after you've gone. And we play the thing, and he says, get into the elevator. <laughs> and we got into the elevator with him, and he got off on the ninth floor, and he walked into his big orchestra rehearsing, and he says, hold it, hold it. He says, there's three guys played for me waiting for the elevator, and if you like them as much as I do, I'm going to hire them. And by God, that's how we got our job. <laughs> <laughs> Can you beat that one, Lou? No. But this is Lou, Lou Paula playing <laughs> rhythm guitar. What did you say, Lou? <laughs> Paul Nowinski. And while we're at it, let's have a nice round of applause for Les Paul, ladies and gentlemen. Les Paul. I was going to ask you, how does that go after you've gone? After you've gone? Yeah. yeah how does it go? <laughs>
my trio now, you'd have, have to, to sing it. Go ahead. Now, don't freeze up on me, Lou. Go I ahead. What words. key are you doing? After he, yeah, that's what Jimmy Atkins says to me. He says, he was so nervous in front of Fred. He says, what are the words? I says, after you've gone. He says, I'm not asking for the title. <laughs> I says, that is the lyrics, after you've gone. That's the first title. That's the first you words. You left me. That's all I know. Crying. Crying. After, after you've, you've gone, gone, there's no denying. There's no denying. You feel bad. You <laughs> feel blue. Or you feel blue. You feel bad. You miss the bestest pal you ever had. Forget it. I'll never remember. All Come those. on. Just sing that much, yeah, for God's sake. After you've sakes. gone. Huh? I don't know. All right. Just go in. Listen. After you've gone. Listen. No, I'll tell you what. Okay. I'll tell you what. Whenever, I, whenever my hands hurt and I can't play, then I talk. See? And that's the reason. I tried playing. And when my hands hurt, and I can, and yeah, and I, it hurt tonight. And so if I can't play, I say, well, I'll just talk to you. Did you know that with Bing Crosby, when I went with, I was with Fred Waring, and I asked Fred, in five years, I says, I'd like to leave. And he says, oh, you got another job. So he figured I was going to say I'm going with Benny Goodman or something, you know. And I says, no, I'm going, I'm going with Bing Crosby. He says, I knew someone would get you and take you away. No, no, I says, Bing has never hurt me. I, I'm just going out there, and that's who I'm going to go with. And I never saw or well, I heard of Bing on the radio, but I never saw Bing until I got in the car and drove out there. You know, and then I worked my way in just as bad as the one with Fred Waring. You know, playing for him in an elevator. I just went over and I says, well, I'm going to get right in there where Bing is. And that's a story I'll tell another time. But, but it, 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 it's a funny story. But I, when I joined Bing Crosby in 1942, okay. Christ, were you born then? Yeah, yeah, I was around. Where, where, when did, were you born? Oh, come I'm trying on. to figure you out the age. No, I'm trying yeah, after to you've the, gone, you don't know six, that. You six don't years even old. know when. I was six years old. Six, five years, five, old? Five, six years old? Yeah, and 42? I was with Bing Crosby. Yeah, I joined him in 42. Now, there's a guy that sang great. And, mm -hmm. You know, he never rehearsed. With, with Sinatra rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. He had, he, and he did, he did a great job. He was like perfect the way he sang. He was one of the greatest singers we ever had. But Bing walked in and he said, what is it? What is it we're going to do? I'd say, well, we're going to do it. It's been a long, long time. So he says, okay, play it. So he plays an intro, and then Binger just, he couldn't read, you know. So Binger just say, well, just uh, give me the lyrics, and I'd play it down one time for him. He'd say, okay, I'm ready. And boom, that was it. That was it. This guy could walk in, you hand him a script. Never seen it before. And hope were back there pacing the floor, Jimmy Durante, all those guys, rehearsing their lines. And Bing would just walk up and say, okay, let's go. One time. So he was a phenomenal guy. After you've gone, you just hand it to him. If he didn't know it, he'd say, I forgot the lyrics, you dirty bastard. And he just went right, yeah. I got more records of him cursing where he didn't, didn't get the lyrics right. Yeah, we've got more to Oh, Joey, am I glad you're here. My hand